chest pain is scary. But what about non-cardiac chest pain? Chest pain that resembles angina, a heart attack. What if I told you that sometimes that pain can be coming from your neck? This video is for the viewer that has chest or neck or shoulder pain. They've been to their doctors, they've been to their cardiologist, they've worn monitors, they've had their blood tested. They say it's either in your head or there's nothing we can do about it. I'm gonna explain how sometimes chest pain can be coming from your neck and what you can do to take control. Stay tuned. Now, I hope this goes without saying, if you're experiencing any type of chest pain, either get to your family doctor or likely the best place to go is the ER. We wanna make sure you rule out any other cardiac cause that may be causing your chest pain. However, if you're the patient that's been to the ER multiple times, have had ECGs, every test you can imagine to help rule out a cardiac cause of your chest pain, then this video might just be what you're looking for. Over the last 20 years in practice, I see many spinal related problems from low back pain to sciatica all the way up to cervical instability, dizziness, headaches, migraines, pinched nerves, and just about every other thing you can think of that might originate from your spine. One thing that I sometimes see is cervicogenic cardiac pain or non-cardiac cause of chest pain. Often this is a patient that will experience neck pain. They may have had a pinched nerve in the past that runs down their arm. They might have headaches. And at the same time, they might have chest pain that's originating from the lower part of their cervical spine or the upper part of their thoracic spine. Patients with cervical angina or pseudoangina will present just like a patient with angina or a heart attack. The pain can be sudden and sharp and last less than five seconds, or it can be that crushing feeling that tightness in your chest that could last up to 30 minutes or more. The difference is the pain is likely related to a cervical spine dysfunction, meaning there could be a lack of range of motion, some stiffness associated. You might have some arm pain at the same time, again, mimicking a heart attack, but you've already been to your doctor to rule that out. And that's why you're still here watching this video. Another thing that these patients sometimes present with that might seem strange are sympathetic nervous system symptoms or autonomic symptoms, things like shortness of breath, double vision, excessive sweating or nausea, vertigo, and other symptoms that might be similar to what someone would experience with an anxiety attack. Typically the area involved would be the nerve roots between C4 and C8, the cervical sympathetic chain, the vagus nerve, and other potential causes would be a referred pain from another area in the neck. This study here, shows that conservative treatment of the cervical spine or upper thoracic spine dysfunction can go a long way in helping patients with cervical angina or pseudoangina that's coming from their neck. I'm gonna show you four exercises that you can do immediately in the comfort of your home to help correct some of the dysfunctions in your neck and hopefully make that chest pain a thing of the past. A few things before we start. I want you to get a small towel or an exercise band. The next thing is I want you to do these with me. I want you to feel what I feel so I can explain what you should be feeling and where you should be feeling while we go through these four exercises. And finally, do not worry about the reps or sets. As usual, I'll put a summary at the end of this video and in the description below, so you can have a nice summary of this routine so you can easily do this anytime you want. Okay, for the first exercise, we're gonna use the towel or the exercise band. This is going to be a towel stretch or a towel traction. The difference with this one is we're gonna to try to focus on the middle to lower part of our cervical spine or the upper part of our thoracic spine. So how we're gonna do that, pull the towel and let it hang over our shoulders or the exercise band. And instead of pulling up to traction, we're actually gonna pull down and away. So we're gonna to try to put pressure into the lower C-spine, the upper T-spine. So as we pull down, we're gonna extend back. So the pressure in the upper part of the upper back or the lower part of the cervical spine is gonna be this way as we extend our head back. What you should be doing is firing some muscles, but you should feel the pressure through the lower part of your neck or the upper part of your thoracic spine. We're gonna hold this five to 10 seconds and then we'll rest. So most times we show traction uh, upwards and that's really good for the upper part of the neck. This time you wanna feel in the lower part. So let's do this again. Again, over your shoulders, in your traps and we're gonna pull on an angle about 45 degrees towards the ground while we extend and fire the muscles in the back of our neck and hold for five to 10. This looks easy, but it's actually a good tricep workout. And the fact that you're firing your head back to activate some of those muscles back there, it's actually quite a fatiguing exercise. So some of you might only wanna start at five seconds. If it's easy for you, then by all means, go to 10 to 15 seconds. And we're gonna do this for three sets. The next exercise is called the prone neck lift. For this one, you're gonna get on your elbows, you can do any flat surface. 
Get comfortable on your elbows, and we're going to start the exercise by letting our head hang. Then we're going to move and extend our head up as far as you can in, and hold for two to three seconds, and come down. Again, you need to fire the muscles in the back of your neck to support this and squeeze at the top for two to three seconds. This exercise can be performed for three sets of 10 repetitions. It's a really good exercise for range of motion and mobility in your neck, but also really working the lower part of your cervical spine and the upper thoracic spine, which is the exact area you want to focus on to help relieve tension through those nerve roots. Now for the third exercise, we're going to stretch our upper traps, which will help create some mobility in our lower cervical spine and upper thoracic spine. There's a few ways to do this. One of my favorite and I find most effective is to simply sit down on a chair or a bench and you're gonna grab the, either the side or the front of the chair. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna slowly lean away while you let the affected side shoulder drop. At the same time, we're gonna grab our head with your opposite arm and slowly pull down. You should feel that from the upper part of the trap that goes right into the middle part. And for some of you, you might wanna rotate your head some might need to rotate it backwards or some might need to rotate it forward. Get to the area where you feel you get the maximum of stretch and hold this for 15 to 30 seconds. That stretch feels really good. One of my go-to stretches throughout the day. And the same thing on the other side. Grab the bottom, lean away, drop the shoulder down, opposite arm, and lean as we pull. And for me, it's a slight rotation down or towards the opposite side where I feel it the most. Again, hold this for 15 to 30 seconds. For that stretch to be most effective, you want to do that three times on each side, holding for 15 to 30 seconds. For some of you, depending on where your stiffness is, some of you might feel a little higher and some of you might feel a little lower. We're trying to hit the lower part of the neck. So we want to feel it in that area. So as I say, you're going to rotate your head in order to find the best area to stretch for you. The final exercise, the bow and arrow stretch. For this exercise, I want you standing up. I'm going to do it from the front and the side to show you both angles because it can be hard to see when you look at the front. But just as the name suggests, we're going to be in a position almost like we're going to pull a bow and arrow. So how we're going to start that is our shoulders back, stand up nice and tall. Our one hand's going to come forward and our other hand's going to come back. We're going to protract the shoulder on one side and retract the shoulder on the other side. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna hold that stretch or that exercise for five to 10 seconds, and then we're gonna repeat the other side. Protract the front and retract the back and hold five to 10 seconds. Now from the side, I think this will be a better view and you'll understand this exercise a little bit better. Stand tall, shoulders back. The front arm is gonna come like this. The back arm is gonna come like this. The front arm is going to protract while the back arm retracts. So it's not a rotation. So we're going to do this at the same time. Protract and retract, hold. And now the other side, protract and retract. So let's do this together. Hold for five to 10 seconds. Some of you might want to go to 15 and then come back. This one's a tough one. If you're doing this properly, you'll feel the upper part of your thoracic spine and the lower part of your neck actively working while those muscles fire. They're gonna get nice and warm. You're gonna know you're doing it properly. The biggest thing we wanna make sure you're not doing is rotating through. Another thing is we don't wanna lean our head forward. We wanna get it upright. Whew, you can really feel those muscles working now. As promised, here's your summary. You're first gonna start with a lower towel traction. You're gonna hold this for five to 10 seconds and perform three reps or sets. The second exercise will be the prone head or neck lift. This should be performed for three sets of 10 repetitions. The trapezius stretch will be done next. 
You want to hold this stretch for 15 to 30 seconds for three sets of reps and make sure to perform this on both sides. And finally the bow and arrow. This one's a little bit more complex and might take you a few tries to get it right. Hold this for 5 to 10 seconds for 3 to 5 sets, again on each side. Check out the description below for a link to this summary. This video's topic was chosen because I had multiple requests from viewers just like you. If you have an idea for a topic, put it in the comment section below. I'll add it to my list and try to make that video for you as soon as possible. And finally, if you're new to my channel and you like the content I'm putting out, maybe you'll consider subscribing so you can be informed when I upload a new video. As well, if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up to show some support. Thanks again for tuning in. I can't wait to see you on my next video. Until then, stay well.